live now, but we'll just wait. Hey, Steve. Hey. Why is it yellow? Mm, it's yellow. Let me see. It's because night shift is on. I'll turn it off. Do you have background music? One person. You got one person? Perfect. We'll start in a bit. Is there a way that we can put um, the description of what we're doing? Is there a way to put a description? By the way, you can say stuff in the background I know, if you just, need to. I can make a comment. But uh, you just put in the comments um, if you have questions about the transformation challenge, add them here. But we'll just wait for a couple people. <clears throat> How's my background? It's fine. Is it good? The light not too too much? I no. didn't put any makeup on, so this is, this is as good as it gets. <laughs> Lisa Ann says hey. Say hi back. <laughs> you can say it. Okay. I know. Um... Might as well just start and then people will just pop in. Lisa Ann says, looking good. Oh, good. <laughs> um, yeah, so let's just get started. Uh, so, for those who don't know, this is my dog, Misty. And she's probably going to be th in the whole... Oh, oh my geez. God. Uh, in the whole video, because uh, she's super hyper right now. Came back from a walk and that's when she gets the most energy. So I apologize if she like puts her butt into the camera, because she tends to do that. Um... Oh, good. So what we're going to do, um, last time when I did a live stream, I had a bunch of questions about the transformation challenge, and I kind of jotted down all the ones that I have seen um, over and over again. So rather than emailing every single person back with the same answer, I thought I would make a video of a live stream and kind of just knock them all down. Uh, so the first one... Uh, when is the challenge? So it's September 11th on Monday, and that's the official start date. And the other thing to know is on Monday, I'm going to be posting a video for the transformation challenge. And inside um, the post, there will be a link to put you on the VIP list. And the reason why I'm doing it uh, that way is in previous years, you know, I would put the transformation challenge out there and it was sold out with all the spots because I can only take so many people in order to give enough attention to them. So I thought this year I'm going to do a VIP list where you just put your name and your email address and what's going to happen when the doors open for registration, uh, you will have 24 hours before everybody else. So you'll have a special link sent to you where you can register and secure your spot. Um, the other question I got a lot is how does the challenge work? So the challenge is based on a point system. So it's not necessarily how much weight you need to lose or how many inches you're going to drop. It's all about points. So what can you do for points? So an example is for every workout that you do, every habit you track, every, you know, um, I do like little weekly challenges. So one of them is if you take a photo of one of your meals every day, you get points for it. And then each week I'll have a weekly challenge that will also be worth more points. And there'll be easy stuff that will take, you know, a couple minutes to do, which will be um, for lower points. And things that are going to take a little bit more time will be worth a lot more points. And... Um, that's how the challenge kind of works. Most points will be the winner at the very end. Uh, the other one is how long is the challenge? It's eight weeks. So it starts on September, September 11th and it ends on November 5th or 6th, I believe. So whatever eight weeks is. And then usually the following Monday will be an email to the whole group of um, who the winner it was. Um, so a couple other questions that I got was kind of how the challenge works based on the nutrition information. 
and I'm a huge advocate for habit-based nutrition compared to counting calories, counting your macros, and lists of foods that you can't and can't eat. So what habit-based nutrition is, is that you know each week you're gonna have a habit focus. So for example, week one could be protein. And all I want you to focus on that week is to track that you're eating protein at every meal. And then every time you put a little check mark on your habit tracker, you get points for it. And then week two, it can be another habit. Then week three will be another habit. And as you go along, you're gonna build these habits and eventually those are gonna stick with you for the long run. So I look at this uh, eight week uh, challenge as almost a course, like a crash course on nutrition and teaching you life skills that will last for a long time. Whereas if you look at any other diet out there, it doesn't teach you anything. It just tells you what to eliminate and you end up feeling like shit the entire time. Um, uh, another person asked me like, what will I be doing um, for them during the challenge? Cause they are a lot of challenges out there where it's just automatic. Like the coach who designed it, um, everything's automated to a point where they can just sit back and do nothing. And it's not like that. You do receive emails every week. So on each Monday, you'll have your habit email. On Wednesday, you'll receive another email to kind of follow up to see what's happening. And then Friday will be kind of like a giveaway of something like if I found a great blog on something that we're talking about, I'll send that through. Maybe it's a workout, maybe it's a recipe I found. Fridays are gonna just be like a fun day of free information that will actually benefit you. And then on top of that, I'm gonna be actually checking in with each single person. So I'm gonna email them, message them, whatever it is to see what's going on, troubleshoot any issues they may have to make this more of an individualized approach. And that's another question I get is that, you know, what if I'm an advanced person? What if I've been working out for five years, I have a fairly good knowledge on nutrition, why would I wanna do something like this? So the example I gave earlier about, say, <clears throat> protein is gonna be the habit. For someone who's brand new, maybe all they need to focus on is making sure they have protein during lunch because that's the one thing I notice is that they're not eating at all um, protein in their lunch. So let's just focus on that. Whereas a person with more experience, let's break down how many grams of protein you're taking in. Let's see what your activity level is and is the current amount of protein you're taking enough for you to recover, build muscle or whatever you wanna do in order to do that. And it can even go to someone who's really advanced, who's like, say, um, an endurance athlete who cycles a lot. Let's figure out if you're eating enough carbs to actually sustain you if you are cycling for 100 kilometers on the weekend. Um, so that that's the one thing, like, it's a very intimate and, yeah, I would say it's more of an intimate challenge where I'm putting a lot of my time into every person that's part of the challenge. And the other cool thing is the private Facebook group that we have. So that's kind of the main uh, base where everyone's gonna be feeding their photos and challenges in there. And the cool thing that I've noticed with the, with the photos being you know sent in there, because on a daily basis you can um, rack up points by a workout and one meal picture like I mentioned before, and the Facebook group is where you will send them in. And then all the people in the challenge who see that, they start picking up ideas like, oh, that looked pretty good. They'll message that person, like, what's that recipe? And then you got another recipe in your arsenal to start using in your cooking. And then people start communicating and they like, oh, I had trouble with this this week. And they're like, oh, this is what I did to kind of get over that. We got a question, what is it? Uh, it's from Emily. Um, are there workouts provided with the challenge? So yes, that's another question I've been getting is that there is a program provided. Um, so essentially my goal for everyone is to work out four days a week. And in the program there are um, workouts for four days. And again, I tell people that no matter um, where you are for fitness wise, 
the workouts can be tailored to your ability. And even if you could only fit in, say, two strength workouts per week, but you know you have 20 minutes available each day to do something, walking your dog would count. So the funny thing was last year, people asked, like, would walking my dog count? Because I actually had um, a woman who was brand new and she was limited to time and she asked me, is that okay? And I'm like, of course. So she actually walked her dog twice a day, seven days a week, and it counted. And she actually saw great results because she came from nothing, from no exercise experience whatsoever, and both her dog and her got fitter because her dog used to be lazy and didn't want to go on walks and now it's pretty active and hyper. Um, and then the other question I got the other day actually was, um, what if you're already working out and have a program designed by somebody else, do I need to do this program? And the answer is no. So I had a woman the other day who's a CrossFit athlete and she was worried that if she changed her program, she wouldn't be able to do her lifts. And I'm like, that's completely fine. Like if you want to do CrossFit, you know, four or five days a week, by all means, that's going to count. As long as you take a photo of proof that you did your workout, that's going to count. Because the main component of this whole thing is the nutrition component. The program is just there. And most of the time, people just need something to follow. So the program is kind of the best bet. But if you already have something that you're doing, or you physically can't make uh, enough time for a full hour, 20 minutes of activity will count for points. Um, the other one was people were asking like, how long into the challenge are they going to see results? So this varies a lot for individuals. So an example would be like someone who's brand new to exercise that's never done anything will see results a lot faster compared to someone who's been exercising for a long time. Um, the example was, I had a woman last year, came off a of pregnancy, she was maybe nine months uh, after her birth, uh, given birth to her child, and I think within the first two weeks she dropped about four inches, but again, she was coming from, you know, not eating breakfast, she, when she would eat, it would be in small little niblet amounts where she had time between feeding kids and just changing small little habits, she already saw a huge result. Whereas someone who's a little bit more experienced or um, has been training for a while, it'll take a little bit longer. But typically, if you're doing everything correctly and following the whole challenge to a T, within the first two weeks, you will notice some things. What can they be? It can either be you feel better, you're sleeping better, um, you have more energy, and you can even see your measurements go down because that's the other thing that every two weeks um, you'll do measurements and send them to me. And if, like I said, if you're doing everything suggested in the challenge, stuff should be moving in the right direction. Sometimes it doesn't because I had, uh, again, another woman last year she, who ended up actually winning the challenge. Her first two weeks, she like did everything she could. She was working out seven days a week her food was amazing and she didn't see any change. And I'm like, you know what, that's okay. And I told her, just wait until that one month mark. And in that one month mark when it came, she dropped a lot of um, inches. And I'm like, sometimes it's just how the body is, right? It's learning how to adapt. And there's so many different like variables that happen when it comes to weight loss that you just have to kind of be patient and just see what happens and this is just information that your body's trying to give you that something's happening maybe it's not happening right now but wait a little longer something will change you have a question yes um do we need to submit before and after pictures so that is optional because i always get that um question but i would suggest to take them and you don't have to send them to me, but I would keep them for yourself because you never know um, what kind of change could happen for you. And say in the eight weeks you dropped like 20 pounds and you're like a completely different person, it'd be amazing for you to actually have those photos of yourself to see how much change actually happened. And photos don't lie because sometimes 
you might feel like you're not changing, but if you didn't see a person for a long time and they dropped 10 pounds, that person would notice. So it's not required, but it's a good marker to um, kind of gauge where you're going. And again, you never know. You could drop 20 pounds, be a completely different person, and not having photos of something like that kind of sucks. And I would just highly suggest to do it for yourself. And if you feel comfortable that you had like a huge change and you want to send it to me, awesome. Um, anything else? Um, so yeah, the other question I got was like, how many times per week do I need to work out? I suggest four workouts um, per week minimum. And when it comes down to the science of it, when for optimal fat loss, you wanna do two strength workouts and two metabolic workouts. So the two strength workouts is where you're learning how to like lift actual heavy weight. You're not putting yourself to exhaustion. You're just working your butt off. And then a metabolic workout would be a little uh, more high intensity and um... <laughs> so this is my dog that hugs me when she wants attention. I'm just gonna put her down. Okay, that's that's great. Um, yeah, so a metabolic workout would be something that's a little bit more high intensity. It's usually referred to as like a hit workout, and those are all provided. But again, if you only have 20 minutes and you want to go for a uh, a walk, then that will count. Um, We've got two questions here. Yes. Um, what's the prize? Your car? <laughs> Is that it? And, well, what's the prize? Uh, so, I kind of leave it to the end. So, part of your registration fee actually goes towards the prize. So, I always tell people, if you have friends interested, sign them up, because then that jackpot grows. So last year, because um, I had a couple of guys do it, primarily it's all women that do this challenge. And so I had to kind of wait to see who's gonna win. And then when I got an idea of who, um, if it was gonna be a female, um, I actually bought a gift certificate to a spa. And the cool thing I found was on uh, online, there is a company called spafinder.com and if you are a spa in anywhere in the world, it you can register under Spa Finder, and I can get a gift card to um, there, and you can use that gift card to any spa in the world, which is pretty cool. Okay, we've got another question. Sure. After the eight weeks, what are the options for continued uh, nutrition coaching? Uh, so yeah, at the very end, because I don't want it to just end at the eight weeks, I always tell people if you ever have questions, or you want to reach out if you're not sure about something I'm always here to help uh, I do offer nutrition coaching uh, there's only two packages it's either a six month package or a 12 uh, 12 month package because again nutrition is not just you know a 30-day thing and that's gonna fix everything that you've you know accumulated over the past 10 20 years of your life because it's a lifestyle change right it's like you didn't gain 20 pounds overnight it happened at a slow rate 10 20 years and then you woke up you're like hey shit i need to fix something so same thing with nutrition we gotta break down the bad habits some people will pick it up uh, a lot quicker some people will pick it up a lot slower depending on what's going on in their life so there's a six month package and a 12 month package and you get like 24 7 access to me and the other cool thing is that we'll do um, Skype meetings online every month. And we'll kind of chat about what's going on in your life. What can we do to you know, make everything easy? Like basically bulletproof everything that it becomes automatic. And that's where that habit-based nutrition comes from. Where you know, when you wake up in the morning, you go brush your teeth. You don't even think about it, it just happens. And like for me, I wake up, first thing I do is coffee. So just like nutrition, you can do the same thing and create that into a habit. It just takes some time. And like all the research that shows, you kind of want, you know, practice about a new habit anywhere from three to four weeks. So, you know, six months to 12 months, that's kind of a good chunk of time if you're constantly practicing a new habit. 
and it'll last for a lifetime. Because I've seen my online clients where, you know, they've never eaten breakfast in their life. And after four months, it's a full-blown breakfast that they've said before. They have no time to cook. They have no time to do this, no time to do that. But slowly you chip away at a habit and it's just going to happen. Is there? Yep. Um, what is the fee for the challenge? Uh, so it's going to be one ninety nine for the challenge. And again, I would hop on that VIP list because it will sell out. Um, and again, on Monday, that list is going to come out to put your name down. Again, that list will guarantee you 24 hour head start before everybody else. You don't have to pay anything on that on Monday. Your name will just be on there. Um, yeah, I can't say a lot more because I want to kind of keep it as a surprise, but just look out on Monday on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I will put it out there. Um, anything else? Um, Tyler's asking if the winner can choose your next hairstyle. <laughs> um, possibly, but uh, I don't know. I, I, I like my hair right now. I, I'm, I'm growing it out. <laughs> um, I would have to see a, a see a picture of what they're uh, thinking about because maybe I'll do it. Um, what have your past challenge participants said they've had they have gained most from the challenge? Because um, I've had a lot of testimonials because that's I always ask at the very end for feedback because at the end of every challenge I always want to improve it some way. So I look back at what I liked, what I didn't like, and then I asked every participant the same question. And then with all that information, it kind of shapes the next year. So I'm really excited that, you know, this is the third year the challenge is happening, and I've been listening to everything that um, past participants have said, and majority of them said that they really enjoyed learning nutrition as habit-based, compared to here's a list you can't eat this you can't eat that follow this for 30 days and you'll lose weight and they said it was almost refreshing to learn nutrition this way compared to every diet book they read every cleanse or detox they tried because it's sustainable right and you can still enjoy the foods that you know you like on the weekend it's just not in abundance, right? Um, but I would say the biggest thing that people learned was learning nutrition this way compared to everything they've seen. And now because it's getting more popular, um, a company called Precision Nutrition that I'm certified through, they've actually started doing research on habit-based nutrition and they have better adherence and better success with the people doing it that way compared to a crash diet that you know, you've heard your friend do seven times and still has been trying to lose the last 10 pounds. So I think that was kind of the biggest takeaway for a lot of people doing the challenge. Um, where do you get your nutrition guide slash recipes from? Nutrition guide? Um, I would say over the years of being in this industry, you pick up a lot of stuff. So I don't just like stick to precision nutrition. I also look towards other dietitians I respect. I also follow a lot of bodybuilding coaches that don't actually necessarily have a nutrition degree or anything to do with nutrition, but they're really good at making people look amazing on stage. So you, I almost like took bits that I've liked from different spaces in the fitness industry and just kind of compiled it as my own and see what worked, see what didn't. Um, a lot of times when it comes to recipes, I will literally just Google it. Like, There's a cool thing on the internet called Google that you can like learn so much as just finding the right information. So I tell people a lot when you see a Facebook video saying these five foods are going to melt belly fat or this like supplement that's really good in iron or whatever is going to help you do this and this or shrink whatever usually you need to look for their supporting research and nine out of ten times there is no supporting research i've been given books and blogs and articles from clients saying like oh what do you think of this diet and i'm like well 
I read the first chapter and they made all these claims and there's no supporting research. A lot of times it's just a there as like clickbait for you to click it in hopes to basically trick you and get you to buy whatever they're trying to sell. And that's my biggest like pet peeve and I get so angry about this because there's so much bad information out there and I'm constantly like weaving in different articles to find the research and it's never there and yeah I just <laughs> I just do my best to like if something looks interesting I need to find the research and the other thing sometimes it can be supported by a research study so this is this is a totally like side rant but this whole aspartame thing it's been pissing me off for like the last three years so that study that came out that aspartame causes cancer in humans okay let's look at it so when you actually looked at the research one it was only done on rodents yes rodents have similar DNA to humans but it's not exactly the same the other thing was they were giving such a high amount of aspartame into these rodents that it was equivalent for a person at my size drinking 21 cups not cups cans of Diet Coke on a daily basis for 30 days. I'm pretty sure if you did anything at that scale, you'd probably end up sick. So aspartame is not bad for you. So that's why you need to look at the actual research, read it, and form an opinion. And sometimes like it could be done on a individual like Anyway, I think I'm getting too far into it. Anything um, else? What are your views on cheat meals while on the eight-week challenge? Um, I'm okay with it as long as uh, your cheat meal isn't a cheat day and you consume over 10,000 calories, which is really easy. Like, you know, you wake up Saturday and you're like, hey, this is going to be my cheat meal. You order a whole large pizza to yourself, six beers, and then a cheesecake to top it off probably not the best choice sounds like our old friday night <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's what else my friday night um but you know if you decide to have you know two slices of pizza and a beer that's not gonna destroy your progress and that's another thing is that a lot of people um who end up going on this diet or they want to start eating healthy they start depriving themselves the more you deprive yourself the more you want that cookie the more you want that pizza and the more you think about it that urge builds up to a point where you can't control it and you're gonna go into a binge cycle so if you're ever at a party and you see a plate of cookies and all you're thinking about oh, I want that cookie I can't have that cookie I want that cookie I can't have that cookie and that's all we're playing in your head you leave the party you're driving home you're like fuck I should have had that cookie and you end up like going to the store and you buy a whole pack of Chips Ahoy and the next thing you know you're on your couch like halfway through the whole box and you're like what have I done? You are better off just having the cookie at the party compared to whole pack or half a pack of cookies. So yes there is room for your cheats because honestly I believe the more you deprive yourself you have a higher chance of binging and causing more damage. Anything else? Um, let's see what else I got here. Uh, so the other one was, um, is it a meal plan? It is not a meal plan. I am teaching you how to eat properly. Um, you'd be surprised. Uh, one of the biggest things that women especially under eat protein. And in the years previous, I had women who are already fit and... You know, I was kind of curious to see like what they were eating. I'm like, okay, let's track your macros for a couple days. And this one woman in particular, she was only like her total calories for the day. She only had 15% of that being protein. I'm like, holy crap, that's really low. And for those who don't know anything about macros, protein should be one of the highest, anywhere from like 30 to 40%. So I'm like, okay, let's just let's make an effort to eat more. And she ended up leaning out so much, she built a lot of new muscle, and she just looked amazing. So when it comes to this challenge, I'm gonna be teaching you how to make complete meals. Whereas, you know, a lot of people think they're eating healthy. That whole idea when I ask 
I ask this to everybody. They're, I'm like, so how's your eating? They're like, oh, I eat pretty good. I'm like, mm, there's probably something that we could fix. And it's most likely how you're combining your food together. Because sometimes people just don't know, right? When they think, oh, I need to eat healthy. It's just salad all the time. But you got to look at what you're putting into the salad to make sure it's a complete meal. Um, the other one was, do I need to take supplements? Uh, no, but there is a section in the challenge where I will teach you about supplements and which ones you should essentially be taking. And honestly, it's really simple. Like when clients ask me, it's like, take a multivitamin, fish oil, and if you're not in a warm part of the world, vitamin D, right? The only challenge is, is that the quality of the product. So in Canada and the United States, the FDA has really, really simple rules when it comes to creating supplements. So for example, if I decided today, if I wanted to create a pre-workout supplement or any supplement that I think of, I can do that today without going into any testing which is a scary thought. So all supplements are not made equal and I'm gonna kind of teach you what to look out for. And the other thing is um, if you look at a fish oil um, bottle, it'll have, you know, take three capsules, whereas the one right beside it will say take six. So you have to also even look at serving sizes and different things like that. So I'm just gonna give kind of basic knowledge of what to look out for and which ones are kind of safe to consume and won't kind of cause any harm. Um, another one was like if I have food allergies, um, definitely you can do the challenge. You just have to, I'll spend a little bit more time with those individuals where, um, you know, if they have food allergies, I'm gonna kind of, the other thing that actually before getting into that, the uh, original paperwork that I'm gonna to send to you, one, it's gonna be worth 100 points if you fill it all out because it's actually 27 pages, but it's gonna give me a huge blueprint of what is kind of going on in your body. And one of the things is gonna take you through a nutrition questionnaire and it's gonna ask if you have any food allergies. So then those people, I'm gonna kind of put a little flag down that I need to spend a little bit more time and effort for those people to make sure that, you know, nothing contradicts uh, their food allergy. Um, the other one is, do I have to count calories? Yes and no. Depending on where you are uh, as an individual, it's gonna depend. If you're a brand new person, I'm not gonna worry about it. If you're interested in doing it, for sure. If you wanna count your calories, go for it. But in my experience, if you're brand new, um, it's a little bit simpler not to, but I can teach you how to do ca calorie control with um, just eating properly and learning how to use portion sizes with your hands. Misty, can you stop being rowdy? Um, whereas someone who's a little bit advanced, I would encourage uh, learning how to count calories and also gauging if enough is enough or you're eating too less and things like that. Um, the other ones are, will I learn what macros are? And yes, you will. So near the end of the challenge where we get into like week six, seven, there are gonna be a crash course on macros and even one of the homework assignment, assignments is gonna be, you know, calculate your own macros. And it's kind of fun to see, even if you're a brand new person, it's good knowledge to have and it's gonna pay off if you, you know, really wanna pay attention to nutrition to a like decimal point almost. Um, it's just a good skill to have, but it's not gonna be a main component unless you are an individual that has a lot of experience in nutrition and training. Any questions? Um, so the last one I'll get into that we kind of touched on is will I learn recipes? Yes, I'll be providing a lot of recipes throughout the challenge that are the ones that I've picked up over the years that I've tried myself, I really enjoy, uh, to a point where I've cooked it for years and my wife absolutely hates it now. But mm -hmm. you will learn a lot and I'm really excited for everybody who's interested. And this is kind of like my baby project and I can't wait to like share it with you. So again, if you have any questions, feel free to hit it into the box right now. Um, Again, reminders are on Monday. I'm posting that video of the transformation challenge. 
watch it, like it, share it, and then put your name on the VIP list and you'll have a little head start before everybody gets into it. Um, I think that's it. Any questions? Perfect, so you can message me oh. on... F oh. uh, any coaching on meal prepping and how to set up with a busy schedule to stay on course? Um, there's all different ways. Um, depending on the person's schedule, I always, like for me personally, um, I like you leaving Sundays a couple hours just to put everything together. But even then sometimes, you know, if you're cooking like so many different things, it, the time can add up. Like I've done meal prep anywhere from two to three hours to six hours in one day, which is a lot of time. But honestly, one big thing that saved me a lot of time is a slow cooker. Cause you can like prep everything the night before throw in the slow cooker in the morning and then you come back home from work and you have dinner ready. Because most slow cookers cook anywhere from four to 10 hours and then they have a buffer period of four hours to keep it warm. So even if it's done cooking, it'll stay warm. You come home and your house smells like chicken or soup or whatever you're making. Um, and then there's different strategies where you can do like small meal prep bursts throughout the week where you're spending maybe 30 minutes to an hour every day, but you you constantly have stuff with you. And the big one is just having like pre-cut veggies that you can just throw in together into a salad or just take to work. And the big thing that I've been doing now, because I've been getting a lot busier with my business, is buying actually pre-cut vegetables uh, from the grocery store or pre-made salads. And constantly having veggies on hand is a lifesaver and it's so easy not to have an excuse anymore because like you can be running late you open your fridge everything is there already cut already preset you just have to grab and go anything else um yeah so i guess i talked enough and you guys are probably bored of me um again message me through facebook tag me in anything you want um email me if you have any more questions, but uh, I think I covered quite a bit. I might do another one of these um, later on. If you had a question and you thought of it like tomorrow, I'll probably do another one or just email me. But uh, yeah, I think that's it. See you guys.